Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about dewbacks because dewbacks are actually out now, and I've seen a lot of conversation about them. And I figured this would be a good topic to just talk about a cool new unit for Star Wars Legion that, well, isn't really supposed to be a new unit. It's supposed to have been out a long time ago, but there was this huge dewbacle with the bases and that, uh, you know, if you saw my original Dewback unboxing, you see that it had the huge ATSD size base and now the, uh, you know, the Dewbacks have finally been delivered with the proper base, although most people have gotten the proper base. I've heard some reports of some people still having base related issues, but I guess that's always the case. You'll always get like one or two little errors that happens when you make enough of them. But either way, they are out now and this addresses a whole lot of problems. Uh, one problem being that Tauntauns have been kind of running rampant without their counterpart being available in the game. And so a lot of people were kind of led to believe that Tauntauns were completely overpowered. Uh, a big part of that is that one major uh, potential counter or significant threat for the other side for the Empire was that uh, the Dewbacks weren't actually available yet. So now that they're out, it's going to be really interesting to see if Dewbacks really kind of put a damper on the, you know, the the constant Tauntaun spam that we sometimes see, how effective Tauntauns can be, uh, and also how Dewbacks are going to perform a little bit differently. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. And speaking of Dewbacks, we've got a the first day of the 12 Days of Life Day giveaway winner is going to happen today. So somebody is going to win this Gen Con Spot Gloss Dewback Promo, and it's, oh, double-sided, it's double-sided, there's a Tauntaun on the back, and this is the thick credit card size promo. These are the really super, super nice types of promos. This is this is definitely what you want, definitely what you want. Great way to start off Life Day, and I will mail this to you, so uh, you gotta stay tuned. You gotta watch to the end of the video, though, because I'm gonna announce at the end of the video. This is just the first. So if you're interested in winning any of the 12 Days of Life Day giveaways, well, mine is this one because it's too late because I already got the winner for this one. Uh, all you have to do is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this or one of my videos, and you can be entered to win something. Now, if I select you for a gift that maybe you don't want, you could either just accept it and re-gift it to somebody who might want to use it, or if you want to just say, hey, you know what, I defer, you know, that's not something that appeals to me, then let me know and we can select somebody else. Uh, anything that goes unclaimed after January, though, is going to roll over into uh, Patreon giveaways. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, that's another incentive for you. There's uh, there's also Patreon giveaways going on right now. There's gonna be there's always gonna be Patreon giveaways going. They're happening all the time. Uh, but this will be an extra. You know, whatever doesn't get claimed will end up on Patreon as well. So that's just another way for me to thank the patrons for their continued support. I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of you guys on Patreon. So big thank you to you all as well. With all that admin stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and talk some more about Dewbacks because, well, it's just a really cool unit. Now, at first, you're going to say, well, they're speed one, uh, you know, 90 points, which isn't too bad. They only have that melee weapon, but it's a great, strong melee weapon, which is very nice. Um, they have the, you know, six health, two courage, so they are kind of vulnerable to suppression. That's one of their weaknesses. But they make up for that a little bit with Armor 1. So they're automatically canceling one hit. Uh, and that also can stack if you're able to get them behind some cover, which is not that easy to do. Uh, but if you can get them behind heavy cover, then they can end up canceling three hits out of every shot that's thrown out of them, which is a really cool way to make things work. Uh, they do have Relentless, which is one of the best keywords in the game. I absolutely love Relentless. This allows you to take any type of attack you want, ranged or melee, after you move. While they do only have melee, they're going to be able to do ranged attacks if you equip a uh, you know a gunner to them. Uh, they have reposition, which is great for a big unit with a strange you know with a big base. Well, kind of big. They're not that big, but they're kind of big. Uh, they also have spur, which is hugely important. It allows them to increase their speed up to speed two, which with a kind of large base is really really cool. It's that ATRT size base, so they have a pretty big base. And they are unhindered, which does help them kind of walk right over barricades and, and other like moderately sized terrain. As long as the terrain isn't larger than the, the height of the mini, uh, then they're going to be able to walk right over it. And if it gets bigger than that, then they're going to have problems. They're going to have to try and go around. But that is nice. Now, they do come with training, comm, and the weapon, uh, you know, the upgrades. There's not a whole lot of upgrades you can give to them. But we're going to take a look at some of the upgrades. Now, before we look at the different guns that we like to run, 
their melee attack is strong here. So none of their none of their gunners, none of their gun options are going to have uh, you know a, a, another melee option. Your, your your melee option is already really strong here with six dice, critical two, and suppressive is really nice. Uh, it, and it's basically the stormtroopers hitting you at the same time the dewback is clawing you. And I feel like. The stormtrooper's weapon has the suppressive keyword, and the dewback's claws have the the, the critical two, the red. That's kind of how I kind of feel like they work together. But this is I, the first um, type of like melee weapon that I feel is two weapons combined into one almost. And it makes me wonder if like I wonder if at one point in the design process they thought of making this two and then giving them like maybe uh, arsenal two, but that might have been problematic. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, cause we would have only been able to use it this way, you know, so it just makes me wonder what kind of steps this thing went through what, and how they ended up with a razor claws and shock prod, which is kind of cool. Uh, they do have the red defense die, which is great cause you got, you got the thick rhino hide there and then the stormtrooper plastoid armor, but no defensive surge. So if you've got ways to give out surge options, that is certainly cool. Now, because they are relentless, I love the idea of being able to run them with somebody like Palpatine, who can let them do a free move action, and then thus triggering relentless, because Palpatine is not giving them a speed X move, he's giving them a move action if he does pull the strings, which can trigger so many things. It can trigger reposition, it can trigger spur, Right, you can then take a suppression to go ahead and move again. Oh, by the way, you're not gonna have to worry about panic because it's not your activation, so you're not gonna do the rally step, you're not gonna do any of that. So, you know what, like you're fine, even if it wants to push you over the top. Um, you don't have to worry about losing actions that way, too. Just like I really like the idea of running dewbacks with Palpatine, although the problem is Palpatine's so expensive, you know, it really becomes, but you can potentially get a lot out of this. Uh, that's kind of one of my favorite like approaches to dewbacks right now is to try to run them with Palpatine. Um, not the easiest thing to do. Not the easiest thing to do. So how, what, let's take a look at their gunners. Um, my favorite, I'm starting with my favorite first, is the CR-24 flame rifle. It is also the most expensive at 20 points, but it's great because it's a spray weapon and has blast like most flamethrowers tend to have. But this one, it's range one only. And that makes it harder to use, especially because it costs 20 points, it's expensive. But you're getting two dice per miniature in the defending unit. You can walk up to a squad full of death troopers or storm troopers or rebel troopers or clones or droids. Droids! Oh my gosh, imagine using this and melting some droids. Just literally melting them droids. You could roll so many dice here. Like 16 dice I think you can get with this attack. It's it's nuts. It's absolute insanity for just a single miniature to roll 16 dice. Uh, I, I love that. And what makes it so cool is that they already have offensive surge. They already have offensive surge. So you don't even need to like, you know, try to trigger fire support with somebody with, you know, a weapon with critical or something like that. You don't even have to worry about the, those, those silly nonsense things. This is just such a fun one. Hard to use though because you gotta be in close range. But Relentless and Spur help make that an actual possibility. A little bit easier to maybe get this flamethrower off than maybe somebody like the Snowtroopers, which might have a little bit harder time, which is kind of cool. Um, alternatively, you got the Range 4. If you want to stay long range, you've got the RT-97 Charlie Blaster Rifle. Range 4 with a red and three white. Pretty good to have a four dice attack, or a four dice attack at Range 4 with Offensive Surge. Is not bad and and also you can you know if you want to take your like I feel like this is a good option if you want to minimize your suppression if you don't feel like having to spur to get where you want to go you can just have you know I can move along slowly boom 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 okay good like I'm gonna move shoot and then maybe dodge so I can block even more stuff that comes at me when people are attacking me because people are gonna try to kill your do back it's it's such a it's such a big target and it's such a you know like like an easy option to go after because it's only one mini. You just got to get rid of that one mini, you know. And like I feel like the Tauntauns have more health, especially split between them. You know, the Dubak. Once we get it down, it's done. You know, no defensive surge on it either. So maybe you'll get it. You know, that's kind of my thing. So like, if you want to play more defensively, I think this is a good one. In the middle, we have the T21 blaster rifle. Not that great. Not that great, but has its advantages. First off, still only four. It's still four dice, but it doesn't have the red. So only four white dice, which could be problematic. It's also only range one to three. Um, but the, the pros are it's only 10 points, which is great. Like if you're trying to go like points efficient, you're trying to go bare bones, I feel like it's safe to at least put this one on there because if you don't have the melee range, you can still at least move, take advantage of Relentless and get that free shot. Um, 
maybe at least put some suppression on somebody. But also this one has is an option that could be effective against vehicles or armored targets as well, or maybe even people uh, in in cover. You know, I like I, I just like because the critical keyword is real nice, and I just I like being able to you know, forego search to hit for search to crit. Sometimes I feel like it's a cool option, but it's not absolutely as crucial as it might be otherwise because they already have the search to hit. So it's kind of like, ah, you know, granted, if you're going vehicle hunting, you have just as much of a, a chance of getting the crit or the surge being search to crit for any color of dice. So I feel like this is your option, your anti-vehicle option. It's also cheapest and, uh, you know, so it's got, it's got a few advantages. So that's, those are the different weapons. I really like. I like the Dewback. I, I think it's going to be fun. I actually, now that they're back in stock, because I had one that I was able to buy at Gen Con, and that one was fun. I had a little bit of play with it, but I didn't really get to fully explore the space, because first off, I had the wrong base, and I, so I had to go out and buy one, like, the, the waiting for, like, a replacement base took months, so I went out and bought some of the, you know, the Death Star looking, the premier bases, so I got some of those so I could try, at least try the Dewback. So I'd run a Dewback in a couple of my battle reports, uh, but, um, we just had Black Friday. It's Cyber Monday right now. A lot of stuff was on sale. My local store just got a big new shipment of FFG stuff. So we, they got some dewbacks in. So I picked up another dewback. So now I have two. Uh, and I'm thinking of running, you know, and, uh, and like I, I try not to buy, I try not to max out on anything anymore. So like my, my current go to is like two of everything I think I'm going to want to play. And if I want to run three of something, maybe I'll borrow a third one. And if I like it that much, then I'll go ahead and pick up the third. Uh, but like a lot of times I don't really see myself maxing any particular unit. So I think I'm less likely to want to max things out because we have so many more options right now. Because if like I could run two dewbacks and an e-web or, or two dewbacks and two speeder bikes or maybe only one dewback and two units of speeder bikes or things like that. So I, I feel like the amount of times I'm going to want to run triple dewback are very few. I want to probably do it once to test it out, but I don't feel like I'm going to run triple dewback all the time unless I try it out and it ends up working out great. Uh, and that's kind of one of those interesting things. Um, that's that's fun about this game, especially playing with other people who have a lot of other stuff that you can borrow from and say, hey, you know, or 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 for testing, you can proxy if you got something else. If you wanted to try an ATRT or something like that, um, you know, for casual games, there's really no 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 harm in that, uh, especially since if you're all running them the same, right? Like you know, like oh, I'm running three with flamethrowers. Okay, well, I just put one unit card out there, and because I only need to reference it, I mark the health on the mini itself instead of on the unit card. Like that's an easy way to do it. That's what I do for a lot of my games. But some of you have probably um, been talking. I've seen a couple of people saying, "Hey, have we, how are you guys doing your dewback paint jobs?" Um, I had done, you know, a lot of dewbacks are kind of just kind of green, basically. And I had done one a little bit more bright green a while back, and I think you saw him in one of my battle reports where I made him kind of bright green, a little bit neon green with some deep, like with a little, some like yellow dry brushing. And I did like red and yellow on the saddle and the harness to kind of make him look like a Mountain Dew can because I called him a Mountain Dewback. Which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, it didn't look that great. It wasn't the best paint job. It was more of a joke paint job. Um, yeah, but, you know, I was okay with it. It's just I wasn't really that satisfied. So I figured, well, you know, the thing is, I base all of my Imperial... I pick every faction, and I base them all differently. Like, so the Rebels have, like, this blue and teal kind of alien Felucia kind of looking base. Uh, they're all, you know, blue and teal. Kind of like how Crate... How like your your footprints left a red uh, trail behind the white uh, assault, and that's kind of the theme that I'm going for. I'm just going with different colors as some other alien world. So that's what the rebels are. Imperials are all snow based, and I was like, boy, you know, Dantons don't really go that well on snow. Um, and you know, so I decided, well, what would I'm uh, not Tauntaun. Tauntauns go great on snow. Dewbacks don't do, don't go particularly well on snow. So what would a dewback look like? that you know was meant to go well on snow so for my second do back and so i started working on it and i want to show you guys kind of what i have come up with so far so this is the second do back i got i decided to have him be a little bit more snowy a little bit more of like a cold uh a cold version a cold cousin of the do back i'm calling him the blue back Corny, I know it's a dad joke. I know it's terrible. But yeah, so I kinda kinda pleased with kind of how he's turning out. I gotta do a little more uh work on his rider. Uh his rider's kinda just kinda bare bones right now, but but yeah, so like I'm I'm kinda liking that. You can see the mountain dew back in the you know, like he's a little too bright. I'm not like super crazy about the yellow straps and everything, but but yeah, so like so I've got mountain dew back and blue back, and those are my two dewbacks for right now. Uh I'm just curious what you guys have done. Um 
you know, and, 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 and we have a great outlet for this. I'm going to probably post these pictures in the, uh, in the Discord. I, so if you guys are, if any of you guys are in my Discord, I've done some restructuring of it lately, like have different sections for battle reports and informative videos. And then for like, for the different games that we have sections for, uh, there's a separate pictures section as well. So if you just want to like look at other people's pictures of some of their paint jobs or, or setups or gameplay photos, or if you want to post some of your own, that's a cool resource for that also. Um, so yeah, so that's just something else that kind of cool that has been going on. So uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd share, a little, talk a little do-backs with you guys today. Uh, it is Cyber Monday too, so if you're interested in any shirts or anything like that, I've got uh, like the Tee Public link down in the description below. Like all of my shirts are on sale for, I think today's the last day. So for any of you guys who are looking for like a stocking stuffer or, or something like that, that's a great option. Um, also, I have... Uh, been doing using a lot of luxury playstyle tokens code crabock vip for luxury playstyle if you guys are interested in tokens they have a lot of games keyforge x-wing i've been using a lot of them in my legion games as well uh so you can save uh, I think that sale is also good running through today. We can get uh, up to 20%. Normally, it's a 15% off, but it's 20% for today. I think I think tomorrow it ends. So you got a little bit of time left on that. Um, but on to what you're waiting for, the giveaway. The first giveaway of the 12 Days of Life Day. And we are going to announce the winner. So I want to do a congratulations to Wolf58. You have won yourself the Dubak slash... Um, slash Tauntaun. So if you play either of those factions, then this is going to be greatly useful for you. And I figured it was kind of appropriate because we we're talking about dobacks today. So just go ahead and shoot me an email. You can find my contact information on the back end of my channel under the about page or on crabback.com. It's basically just mail crabback at gmail.com. Uh, shoot, shoot me your contact information. We'll get you squared away. And uh, that's about it, guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And if you're interested in winning any more of the giveaways, there's 11 more of them. They're coming. Uh, and you never know when they're going to show up. Some of them may show up on Twitter or Facebook as well. They're not all going to be in YouTube videos. Uh, so if you want to follow me on Twitter or Facebook, there's links for all of that stuff down there. If you're interested in becoming a patron, there are links for Patreon down in the description as well. I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. And as always... Have a great day. Happy Life Day. Happy Holidays.